on, dude. Take time for these things. Alright, let's pause it and check out the teams here. So, today, ladies and gentlemen, in this gameplay overview, we have... Wait, is this your gameplay? Oh. Alright, we got Skeptical, Ace, Iron, The Pressure, and the Red Team. And in the blue corner, we have Senator Titch, Project X Patty, George Illa, Whatever I Want, on the blue team. And uh, they are facing each other off on Narrow's Team Slayer. Uh, George Illa goes plus 12, so we're going to have a good gameplay here. And we're going to try to... Uh, Give him constructive criticism on what he could have done better, even though he already did an amazing job going plus 12. So off start, it's advantage, he dodges the nades and then picks the side that was less cover to pick off a jumping opponent. Uh, now he's running down low. He got a call out from the dude about the rocket, dude. Alright, pause it, pause it, pause it, go back. So right here, guys, uh, as soon as he started weakening Ace, he should have realized that after they killed two guys here, um, he should have just attempted to go pick up the rockets immediately. Pause and go back. Yeah. Don't play it. No, keep playing it now. Oh, this is what I need. Party leader, bro. Alright, pause it right here. Alright, so right here, guys, he's already backing the sniper off. And uh, on narrows, basically, if you can keep the sniper down low like this, or uh, at the power up in a team slayer game, when you already have two guys off the start dead, you want to be pushing into their lobby. So you see his entire team's up top. So if he goes low, he's gonna have no help, and he's basically gonna like contain himself. This is think of this area as a box. Okay, if you don't have any teammates around you, then you're gonna be Ace. Could, Ace is making a smart play, and he's dodging the nades because these nades are easy to dodge. This nade only hits you if you kind of run away through the door, but Ace jumps up on the ledge, allowing him to evade the nade and. Ace is staying alive long enough along one of his teammates who we'll see here in a second come down L2. Alright, keep playing it. So that player comes down L2 and is able to finish him off. Uh, what he should have done right there is push in the lobby so that other dude wouldn't have to go low. And you see they actually just continue going into snipe, so... When you want to go to their lobby, control their lobby, because the guys down low can't even do anything against you. Well, if your entire team pushes up lobby, then you have free control of their base. Let's fight the young large spot of the So A, pick up those rockets immediately, or stay on R2, and uh, keep the sniper back as long as you can until your teammates come down, and just worry about yourself on R3 and L2. It's a smart play right here, Giving, putting pressure with shots across the map, it's a very smart move, uh, he makes all the guys go into that sniper, which again is a box that, you know, it could either be a, you know, a trapping box, or it could be a box of savior when you can just wait for your shields to come back. Yeah, George Hill right there, again, uh, you got shots into the power up. As soon as you see they spawn cannon, you want to just put shots and then start pushing to the lobby. Reason is, uh, you're most likely not going to kill someone with your BR uh, when they spawn power up unless you're getting team shot or picking off a one shot kill. So you want to be pushing into the lobby and, uh, you know, getting control of the lobby and trapping them there because they're only going to spawn flag and cannon. So if you're able to push into the base, then they're going to be trapped and they're going to have to go to the sides. And then that's when you have guys top minnows shooting those one shots as they try to run away from lobby. Uh, this team on the blue team is doing a great job of uh, controlling lobby. I mean, not lobby, but controlling top middle, and kind of keeping the pressure and the only the red team al only allowing them to stay around the ramps and R2 and L2, and not letting them get to their side of the map. So here, he's going low. He's trying to back him off, letting him know he could probably push down Rocket Bridge here if you wanted. This is five cents for sure. I want to say this is five cents. Faster than five cents. It looks like seven. 
No, it's like a five cents with a no slow controller. Never want to beat L0 and R0. You're never going to come out top in that situation. Why do you never want to beat L0 or R0, Aaron? I mean, it, you have a disadvantage when they're pushing you from top mid. Uh, Good point. Good point. You heard it, guys. Like Aaron said, uh, you, A said, you don't really want to be fighting L0 or R0. Uh, you know, that's a disadvantage for you, and those are some easy nades for top middle. Ooh, nice snipe by. Illa over here, just doing some Illa type of things. Uh, this is a good play. I, I actually like doing this myself after I snipe a guy. That means that there could only be three guys up top or two guys up top at the most. Uh, so I'm expecting my whole team who's alive to beat those guys. So I watch across to see if they spawn cannon. This is the worst play. You never ever want to bring up from L1 to R1 or R1. My bad, I went back. Uh, he just wanted to see himself get out BR. Cellular. I could say it tracks. There's just there's moments I can't say certain words. Whose point of view? Pressure gets full rockets. He brings them back to our side, and then he comes up R1. Yeah, so exactly like Ace said again right there, uh, the reason he wants to flank low with rockets, because I mean, you guys know on the red team that, that there's a player sniping on blue team, so he's probably up top controlling, uh, the top field and making sure no one can get past so for all types of players if you have rocket shoot and you know you have your teammate around you if you have at least one teammate you could push rocket bridge with them and uh if the rocket guy do dies he'll get someone weak at least by finding a rocket off and then you could pick him off from behind and then you'll be able to recover those rockets and then you could start causing flanks in their lobby and such things like that nice play right here he's pushing top mid see as soon as he gets that double kill he needs him and his entire team has to start pushing top middle uh, great job finally picking up those rockets. Poorly, poorly shot rocket. But, uh, see, he's, he's aware that he got, you know, Ace was L2 and will probably try to flank him. It was a good, good job checking his low. He knows people are trying to come L2, so he's just, he's trying to back him off with nades. He's peeking back and forth. This is great, great uh, wall peeking right here. So this is great, great plays by uh, Illa right here. Yeah. He's taking advantage of, uh, you know, the uh, objects on the map and using them for cover. Here, he here he goes again. He's going to be using this for cover. He's fighting as long as he can. Probably didn't have to jump right there on the after, but he probably did a, you know, last resort jump in order to uh, try to pick off that R3 guy. But if he just kept his feet, you know, playing on the f on the floor, he would have been good. Hey, Ron. <laughs> Hi, Ron. I don't know why it takes them a minute to get two kills, but... Oof. Again, once again, he's using the objects of the map to his advantage and just dodging nades and uh, taking cover from uh, opposing snipers and players. You guys gotta look, make sure you're always watching the addicts when you're pushing up a sniper. Very common spot for a sniper. Should have been free aiming there already. Here, at least for it. So now his team's trying to flank. They got sniper top mid. So this is the good overall team play right here. Uh, they knew that there was a sniper top middle, so the red team was probably focused in and being like, alright, we can't die here. We can't die here. And uh, the sniper. Towards the end of the game like that, in a close game, guys, when you have a sniper top middle, you become very effective to allow people to flank because, uh, you you know, you have to make sure your head doesn't poke out or you get hit by a snipe, and because of that, you're trying to focus on shooting people top middle, allowing uh, flankers to come behind you and kill you. So that was a great play by Illa at the end right there as well. Um, Illa played great that entire game. Uh, many So the big two things that we saw was uh, 
there were times he was overextending for a kill, like with the sniper. Uh, he could have just pushed lobby. Uh, that other time when he got a double kill top middle, uh, he could have continued pushing up with his teammate, but he decided to continue staying behind the Mauler wall. Um, but then it really comes down to what kind of play style you want to do. So, like, players like me and Ace and, you know, the status quo team in 2010 and the one that would have gone to this AGL that has been canceled this uh, this weekend. Uh, like, if we got something like that, we were going to be flying from top middle to your Mohawk and your lobby because we're going to want you to be trapped in there. We want you to resort to hitting the cannon or going power-ups and then you guys are trapped there or in the snipe because then we could just go back up through the lobby to the ramps and pin you guys down. Uh, so, but then there's again, you know, teams like usually all the teams that Tuger's ever been on. If you ever seen them? They like to play kind of more of the passive side. Like that, that play Illa did uh, wouldn't be a problem for Tuger's team right there because they'd be set it up. They'd probably want to keep their sniper back in their attic, uh, guy behind Mauler wall, and then uh, just snipe people top middle, and then use the Mauler wall guy to finish off one shot, and then push up on ramps instead of pushing up on lobby. So there's really two sides of the coin. You know, you could be you go the extra mile, the extra distance, and push into the lobby and trap them there, or you could sit back and have snipers set up in your attic, and then from your attic you uh, just have snipers and BRs shoot down people up top, and then uh, pick them off one shot on the ramps, and then you could use the glass top middle right behind and in front of the uh, Mueller wall to see if people are flanking underneath you on Rocket Bridge, and then that's when your team would, you know, uh, ooh, converge on uh, L1 and R1 to stop people from flanking you. So, Illa played great. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that little gameplay breakdown of with me and Aaron, uh, we'll try to do more for you guys.